and gentlemen, welcome back to Subnautica with the Gazbeard. As we sit looking at a moon passing across the sky. And if you look carefully at how fast it's moving, you can see just how quickly time has accelerated in this game. For how long day and night takes. That's quite a rate of travel for that moon. It's... Uh, it's fairly belting along there. There's the Aurora. We're above the base on the top of the life pod. Just waiting for daylight before we go and do whatever we've got to do next. Because we've got a radio message. And places that the radio messages are sending us are getting further and further away from home base. I really do want to wait until daylight before we go out. Well, let's at least go and get the message. Aurora, this is Sunbeam again. We just picked up a massive debris field at your location. I didn't know how bad... how many of you... I, I didn't know. We're now en route to your location. We're going to bring you home. Sunbeam out. What else can I say? The only time I parked a rig this big on a rock that small was in VR. And I blew it. It's a bad option, all right, but so are all the others. Hmm. Well, that second voice doesn't sound too confident about being able to get down here and land. But rescue's on its way. Hooray! 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 Right, let's go get something to eat and drink. And then we'll check to see... And even removing a set of bulbs from each of those plants has not dimmed their light very much, has it? Um, let's get something to eat and drink. And then let's see if we've got to go and meet them anywhere. Um, I think a set of marble melons is in order. Wait a minute. What's going on? Why didn't it pick them up? Use planter. Why is it not? Why are you not letting me pick those marble melons up? Are they not fully grown? Oh, that was uh, life pod 13. What have we got here? Um, no, it hasn't called us forward for rescue yet. It's just saying that they're on their way. Okay, that's good. Right, now, while we're here, let's just check into other logs. Uh, Jelly Ray. Assessment inedible. Okay. Flora, uh, tree leech, exploitable fungal enzymes. Oh, interesting. Wonder if we use them for something. Maybe we should have got a sample of that. Um. we've got to go back down there and get a sample of that because if it's got exploitable fungal enzymes maybe we use that in a recipe well that's maybe what we can do today let's have a look at all these data downloads oh alien data what's this scan data orange tablet uh, right okay Aurora survivors, have we now got... Oh, hang on. 
Live pilot sequence initiated. Entry planetary atmosphere. My creators, the cherishers and sustainers of worlds, give me this day my daily pleasures as I give to those who seek pleasures from me. External temperature approaching critical levels. Show me the path in life, truth, and love for mine is the power. I am the one. On and off and on again. Impact imminent. Life is a game which the universe plays with itself. I am done playing as this bundle of flesh. Return me. Ah, um, okay. So the guy found religion in his dying moments. Okay, have we got all of the Degassi logs now? Because if we have, it'd be interesting to hear them all in sequence. Let's have a look. Uh, Bart Torgal's log, one, two, and three. Degassi voice log, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Margarita's voice log, Paul Torgal's log, one, two, and three. Okay, let's just play all of these through in sequence. I thought it might get claustrophobic living underwater. Father feels it is. He'd tell me it was childish, but I stare out of the window and sometimes I think how lucky I am to see this world up close. Back on the island, I wouldn't have believed the creatures that live down here. The fish, they glow. There's one that's 90% eyeball. Snakes twice the length of a habitat compartment. Certainly, it's not all friendly. Most of the plant life is toxic. Learned that the hard way. But I've managed to coax some marble melons into growing indoors. And when they don't cover our dietary needs, well, we eat the fish themselves. It's a bit gross, but it's nothing they wouldn't do. I've been attempting to document my findings. Father approves. He says, understanding is power. That the more we know about this planet, the more we can use it to our advantage. I'm just doing it because it's fun. It's not easy without proper equipment and network access, but the old-fashioned way, observing, taking notes, testing theories, shows me the world in a way a spectroscopic analysis never could. Lately, I've been watching the crab snakes. They ambush their prey as it tries to feed on the mushrooms they hide in. What they don't eat settles on the seabed, which fertilizes the mushrooms, which feeds the herbivores, and so the chain continues. Coevolution gives me the fuzzies. Something incredible just happened. Since we're down here, I had this plan to build equipment and study the life forms we were encountering, but I didn't have enough enameled glass. So, I started looking for a natural substrate that would strengthen the glass we have, and those stalker teeth we've been finding fit the bill. Only, well, we needed more. That's when Marguerite got interested. She actually listened to me. More than I can say for father. And I worked up the courage to talk about my more tentative theories. When I told her they were attracted to metal deposits, that their teeth get dislodged when they pick them up, her eyes narrowed and she dashed out of the room. Three hours later, she came back, her pack loaded down with stalker teeth. I asked her about it. She shrugged and said my theories were good. <laughs> said she had the meeting out of the palm of her hand. I think she meant it literally. She is incredible. She went out to the kelp forest, armed with just a heat blade, and went fin to fin with a pack of stalkers. On the one hand, that is the coolest thing I have ever heard. On the other, well, I hope the stalkers didn't come off worse than Marguerite did. She had a huge gash on her forearm. I don't think things went as smoothly as she made out. And what's the point in surviving here, if we have to kill everything that makes it so wonderful? I wish I knew more about these animals. But father won't let me leave the habitat. Maybe with all this glass, we could build a containment unit and get up close to them. This is the first time I've seen sunlight in months. After all that time in the deep, I'd been dreaming of it. Now that I'm back here, <sighs> I'm finding it hard to enjoy alone. Father was right. We should never have left this place. We shouldn't have gone so deep. They do not want us down there. Despite my best efforts, ill health is taking hold of me. The V 
conditions are getting worse. Marguerite and father are now part of the ecosystem of this incredible planet. It's reassuring to know that when I go, I'll join them. Until then, well, there's always the view. Okay, so that's Bart's story. Let's have a look at the general voice logs. This island is a godsend. Look out of the window. No predators. Fresh food. No building materials, nothing left of the ship. And your kid says we're gonna starve without more grow beds. Speak up, kid. It's true, father. The natural growth rates are too slow to keep supporting us. All I'm saying is oceans got us surrounded. No use hiding. Sooner or later, we'll get our feet wet. The rest of your life may have been a fight maider, but I've made my decision. You want to forfeit your emergency pay to take a swim? Go ahead. Believe me, I'm thinking on it. Son, I said wait for the storm to pass. Your life's more valuable to me than a plant patch. You stopped being in charge when the ship you were captaining sunk. I'll stop being in charge when you take charge of yourself. Say, Chief. Chief! What? You know how to drain those grow beds of 40 tons of stormwater? Or how to conjure food from the air? I know how to prioritize. I'm just saying, if that's so, what's your boy's life worth to you today? If tomorrow you're gonna be so hungry you start wondering what he tastes like, let him go deal with the plants. Son. Go deal with the plants. Bart, Torical has disembarked the habitat. Interfere with my family again, and when rescue arrives, I will leave you here. Do you understand me? No rescue coming, Chief. Not in time. And no staying here, neither. This rain keeps falling, sooner or later this place will be buried. The only choice we got is whether to get buried with it. Chief, you brought us to this sodden planet. Told us we'd see a lush payday. Now what do we got some six weeks later? A dead crew, a habitat that's half buried, food washed away. I suppose the executive decisions would be better left to someone with your extensive experience of hitting people in the face. I know enough not to take unscheduled detours to uncharted planets. That's something you don't want to learn the hard way. Easy to judge a decision in hindsight. Harder to come up with a plan of your own. Got one already. We take what we can carry and hunker down in a cave somewhere. I scouted a site. A couple hundred meters deep. Lots of metal deposits. How do you imagine we'd live? With ready access to building materials? Like damn queens. A couple of water filters, a bioreactor, fresh fish. But Chief, we'll eat seaweed salad and drink our own urine if that's what it takes. All that matters is, do you got something better? Send the coordinates to my PDA. I'll review your proposal. What is that thing? I don't know. I found it outside in the sand. Uh, part of another ship? None I've ever seen. It's not even scratched. I, I, don't fool around with it. It might be worth something. Stand down, Chief. If it were going to crumble to dust, it would have done so when I picked it up. It's glowing. We're not the first people to come to this planet. People? Maybe. Could be aliens. Could be the damn sea monsters for all we know. One thing for sure, we ain't going to find out by staying here. Son, there is always a pecking order. And in our world, money makes a hierarchy. I pay Maida a fraction of what I pay you, and you a fraction of what I pay me. If money makes the hierarchy, why is Marguerite making the decisions? We need her. We let her think what she likes, so long as she does what she's told. And what if she doesn't? <laughs> For enough money, she will. People always do. We're already 200 meters below sea level. You want to go deeper? Look around us, Chief. 
Water leaking through the hull, water outside the hatch. We're drowning real slow. If rescue arrives, whatever shot us down, it's gonna do it again and again until it's shut off. You see an off switch around here, Chief? Why would it any more likely be half a kilometer down? Your kid found something on the scanner. There's something down there. Something that shouldn't be. <laughs> You're mad! I'm going all the same, and I have an idea you two are gonna follow. But if you do, be mindful. Your authority stopped at sea level. Please, stop fighting and listen. We're sick. What? How? You've been coughing, right? Feeling itchy? Blisters? Yeah. The biometrics would have warned us if we were sick. It's something new. It's not in the database. Come on, then. What's it gonna do? Turn us inside out? Dissolve us into jelly? It's an alien bacteria. It's everywhere. Every organism on this planet. It's altering our genetic code. Uh, how are the creatures surviving if they're infected? I don't know yet. Want me to cut some of them open for you? Find out what makes them tick? No. Just tell me what you need, son. Materials. Equipment. Just... Can I have some quiet? I need some time to think. Margaret, Maida has boarded the habitat. What are you so happy about, Maida? Say, kid, I brought you something. Is that a leviathan outside? Towed it home on the back of the sub. You killed that thing? It's still breathing. I was about to finish the job, but I can stay in chat if you'd like. No. Then make yourself useful and pass me that hardened blade. Are you out of your mind? You brought that thing here? What if it's not as dead as it looks? What if others come? You prefer it got curious and came of its own accord? Or got messed up and dragged here. When we get off this planet, I am going to drag you through every court in the damn Federation. I have had it with you, risking our lives. Oh, stow it, Chief. The kid can't kill this disease without fish to study. I'm just bringing him home. But tell her. Tell her I'm right. You're both wrong. Marguerite, I can't find out how they resist the bacteria if you slaughter them all. It ain't always they oblige in coming in alive. He means you're being reckless. Father, the outcome's no better if we hole up in here and don't go outside. But we have to find a middle way. There is no compromise. Not while she's on my sea base. Your sea base? I'm going outside. Bart, Torical has disembarked the habitat. Bart, come in. It's dangerous. Damn it, boy, I know you can hear me. Chief. Chief, get off the radio and put on your helmet. What? Brace! <laughs> Okay, so that explains what happened to um, Paul Torkel and to Marguerite. Now Bart survived that, and I think we've listened to those two sets of logs in the wrong order. We should listen to the General Degassi voice logs first, and then Bart Torkel's log. What was Marguerite thinking about all of this as it was inf unfolding? These conniving corporate bourgeois, inbred, incompetent, self-absorbed jerks. Don't have a damn clue. The kid's not so bad. He's even useful. But I swear, everything that comes out of his father's idiot face is a narcissistic lie. If he wants to stay in this cave, his problem. I'm the one doing the heavy lifting. When sea monsters are hunting you, you don't hide. You hunt the sea monsters. Then you build a bigger boat out of sea monster bones and you hunt bigger monsters. Keep going until there aren't any monsters left to hunt you. I'm going deeper. I'm gonna find what shot us down and I'm gonna tear its damn heart out. I've started the prep work. The kids taught me how to make enameled glass. I've started stockpiling metal ores to build myself a sea moth. 
I'll raid the indoor grow beds before I leave. Okay. So Margarita was going off to take the monsters on directly. There's always a bigger one. Now, Paul Torgal, the captain, the father of Bart, what was he thinking? Chief's log, five weeks since the crash. The only other survivors are my son, Bart, and Mida, the cut price mercenary I commissioned for the journey. After days drifting in the life pod, rain hammering on the roof, the weather cleared and we washed up here. I had Mida salvage the Degazi wreck, set Bart to finding us a stable source of food. His education is paying off sooner than I'd anticipated. Our only problem is Mida. She says the weather's going to turn. I say she's finding excuses to risk our lives. I imagine she's not gonna weaken her life without a physical altercation, and she's itching for a fight. In every judgment she makes, things go from bad to worse. If she had my experience, she'd have more faith. Humans have spent millennia specializing in how to shackle nature to our will. <laughs> this planet won't cause us any new problems. My one task now is to keep us alive as comfortably as possible until the insurance company arranges rescue. In this part of space, that could be months or even years. You know what Maida told me today? She wants to build a habitat 500 meters below sea level, more than a kilometer northeast of here. And she needs Bart and I to do it. She's got it into her head that she can save us if she just acts recklessly enough. But I've hauled Star Wars to Neptune, Plasteel to the Federation. <sighs> this family operates nine different mining colonies across the Ariadne Arm. Maida thinks she's better suited to lead. Her contract still says otherwise. But I just cannot damn well tell whether it's the stupidest idea I ever heard. Or my only hope. I turned 80 years old last week. I thought I had another 80 in me, but marooned on this planet, there's no swapping out of my liver when the old one fails. Here, I'm mortal. And Maida is useful. So... It's my responsibility to make a decision. Return to the island and hope whatever knocked the Degazi out of the sky won't do the same to the rescue ship. Or take us deeper in search of answers. And all the while be hoping old age gets me before the sea monsters do. I'll give Maida just one thing. She was right about these caves. There's enough lithium there to fabricate a hundred tons of plasteel. Enough for a damn fleet of Cyclops submarines. There was nothing anyone could have done to avoid crashing here. But I was right to order the detour. If we get off this planet, they'll be talking about the Torgel share price on the other side of the Federation. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. An alien kraken, bigger than a Cyclops. Tore a hole clear through the reinforced hull. I barely got my breather in time. I told her. I said others would come. The rupture threw me clear of the habitat. And the monster turned and bore down on me. And just as its tentacles came within reach, Maida appeared out of nowhere. She had a sea glide in one hand, a jagged piece of scrap metal in the other. She meant to butcher that beast or die trying. The last I saw her, she had the metal lodged in its neck as the monster did its best to shake her, contorting off into the darkness. I'm certain she got her wish, one way or another. Then I thought I saw a light deep below me. I hoped maybe Bart had swum clear. I followed it. Now I wonder whether I saw anything at all. Our oxygen is low. The habitat is gone. I can't see the sky. Something surely has the scent of my blood. 
Okay, so that's all the voice logs that we've collected so far from the Degassi survivors. And we've been listening to the Aurora survivors as we found them. So, we've got a public document here. Trans-Government Profile Mongolian Independent States. Um... Nothing important there as far as I can tell. But it looks like 500 meters was the maximum depth that the Degassis managed to get to in terms of creating habitats. So, the question is, is there anything further down? And, good grief, our uh, hydration and hunger has gone wild again. So we need to do the necessaries here once more. And three marble melons is not quite enough. Um, I think we're going to have to do another set of three. Let's come around this side. Come on. Right, that's us fully fed and watered once more. And that's going to have to be a short episode this week because we're almost out of time. There's certainly not enough time to go and do something else within the episode. So what I'll do is I'm going to call it there and we'll check at the next episode if we've got any more radio messages. What I'll probably do in the meanwhile between episodes is I'll go and do some more materials harvesting. I'm thinking I probably need to go back down to life pod 13 and the reason for that is if we look at the information here that we got about, where was it? Oh, exploitable, there we go. Um, no, it wasn't in there. Might have been in Fauna. No. Has to be in Flora. Unless it's under Scavengers and Parasites. That thing that was growing on the mushroom trees. Um, it's not listed in the exploitables. It has to be in here somewhere. Not that one, is it? No. Tree leech. There we are. Exploitable fungal enzymes. Something is telling me that I need to get a sample of that. And the reason I'm thinking that is because we don't have the recipe for making that green goop whose name I'm forever forgetting that we do need for making the reinforced drive um, well we need the synth synthetic fibers recipe wherever that may be we definitely need that but we also need Iron cubes. Hmm. Not sure where we get them, or than well, I do know where we get them, but we don't have access to that area at the moment. Same with the nickel ore. We've not been to where we get that. Um, what was the name of that green stuff? Where's it gone? We also need another part for the prawn suit drill arm. Unless we've got it. No, we've got that. We can actually make it. I'm not sure if we've put it on the prawn suit or not. I'll have to go check. 
Um, we need the blueprints for the grappling arm, which we don't have as yet. Um, I need to build a scanner room. And... There we are, polyaniline. That's the one that we don't have the recipe for. And it does appear in several things that we need to, uh, to be building. So I need to find the recipe for that. And I'm not sure where we find it. But I shall have to go digging for it. And we do need the prawn suit grappling arm. Now I'm wondering if I've got to go back into the Aurora. And I did say a few episodes ago that I would have to go back into the Aurora because there was a few non-essentials that I'd forgotten to pick up. So I may do that and just have a general scavenge around for materials. So while I'm saying goodbye, let's just go check the prawn suit and see if I made the drill arm for it. Let's, I don't know if we can see if it's on there or not. The modules is probably on the other side. It looks like I don't have any modules in there. Um, I don't want to enter the prawn suit. I just want that's a grappling arm. Not a grappling arm, a grabby arm. And that one's a grabby arm. So we don't have the drill arm on it. We don't have a storage unit on it. Unless it's in the back. We can't get to the, the storage unit in the back there. Um, no, we'd have to launch it get into it. I do need to put a locker in here as well for its various bits and pieces because there are components that are specific to the prawn suit that don't go on to the sea moth so I'll get a, a locker put up for that and a few other bits and pieces and I'll see you in the next episode. So this is Gazbeard in the main base starting to ramble and waffle trying to work out all the different things that I've got to do that I might as well do off video rather than um, take you all through the tedium of doing them. I'll save until we've got something more exciting, and then I'll start recording again. Thanks for being here. As always, you know what to do. If you've enjoyed it, give it a like. Um, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments, questions, observations, tips, tricks, hints, everything down below in the comments. Please do comment. Um, I'm noticing that nobody's commenting on the Subnautica videos and I really do need the feedback from you guys. So from me, as always, it's not goodbye, it's just bye for now.